Hello Gidgets, how is it going on? In this video, we are going to deploy a persistent data manager for a Udemy clone. The term of persistent data means once the user shall be logging in under our application until he sign out, all his data about his user login, that is its email and name shall be saved under our Udemy clone. And for the task of persistent data management, we are going to use Flutter Secure Storage. It is one of the best storage manager out there under Flutter. The second option for securing our data, that is persisting our data, is shared preferences. The speciality of Flutter Secure Storage is all the data that is saved under our Flutter Secure Storage is encrypted. Isn't that great? Absolutely. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Under our library, we can move under puffpay.yaml file and first of all get the dependency of Flutter Secure Storage. Once you are getting a dependency of Flutter Secure Storage, you can move under Android, under App, under build.gidl and increase the SDK version of your application to minimum of 20. That's because Flutter Secure Storage won't support SDK version smaller than 16. And if you have done that, you can close this. Under our library, under our services, we can create a new file for storage of all the data. So here I will simply write storage dot dot. Now the following class is going to be responsible for handling all the methods for securing our data. And the data method shall be including for writing data reading data and similarly for deleting data. I can simply write a class for secure storage. So with that said, first thing first, we will simply have the instance of the secure storage itself. So here I can simply write a final storage to be equal to flutter secure storage. All right. So the first method we are going to configure is going to be writing the data under our secure storage. So as I said, the first method is going to be writing the data. So here I can simply write a new future method. Now the following write secure data is going to take two arguments, which are under the form of string. So here I will write first argument to be key and the second argument to be the value itself. Now the method is going to be asynchronous. So I can denote to be asynchronous. So under this method, I will simply have a new variable. Let's say write data and the following write data will be simply awaiting for the storage and from this storage we will simply write all the data. So the write option will simply take a key and a value. So here I will simply provide it a key and similarly the value itself and under this method we will simply return our write data which is our response. Now the same thing shall be going for reading data and similarly for deleting data. So here I can simply write future read secure data. It will take a parameter of just an argument type of key cause at the time of reading data we will simply reading a key not the value. So here I can make it asynchronous and simply have a new variable for read data. It will simply awaiting for storage dot read data and under this key we will simply provide the argument which is key itself and after this we will simply return our read data which is going to be a string. Now the next method is going to be for deleting our secure storage. So here I will simply write a new future method to be delete the usual stuff and this will simply take a string for a key having to be an asynchronous one. We will have a variable. I know you are getting used to it. So here I will simply write delete data. It will simply awaiting for our instance of storage. And from this we can simply delete the key which is the key itself. All right, and after this, we will simply return our delete data. All right, so we have completed all of our methods which are necessary for securing our data. So after this, we can simply move under our authentication class, which is responsible for handling our Google sign in. And under this method, I will first of all have the instance of our secure storage class. So here I will simply add final secure storage, secure storage to be equal to secure storage itself. Now we are going to write data under our secure storage. And if you see our method of writing data, you can see it will take a string of a key and also a value. So here under our authentication, we will simply write a secure storage dot write secure data, which is our method. Now under the key, I will simply provide a key for email and under the value, I can simply grab user dot email easy as that. And after this, we can simply grab the name of the user itself. So here I will simply write key to be name. And similarly under the value, I can simply write user dot display name, which is its name. All right. You can format document once. Now this was all about for writing our data under our secure storage. So after this, we can simply move under our splash screen and under the splash screen, we can configure whether we have our instance of our secure storage. So first thing first, we will have the instance of the secure storage itself. So here I will simply write final secure storage, 
secure storage to be equal to the secure storage itself. Alright, so here under our init state method, we will simply write secure storage dot read secure data and under the following read secure data, we will simply give it a key and the first thing is going to be the email that is our first key. So here we can simply assign the then function of our future method. So with that said, we will simply have a new string for catching the email. So here I will simply write final email and after it we will simply have a name as well. So here I will write final name. So here under this method, we can simply grab the value of our final email and assert it to be the value that we are getting from our read secure data method. So after grabbing the email of the following user, we will also grab the name of the following user. So for that, I can simply write secure storage dot read secure data and under the key, I will assert the key to be name and then I will simply grab the value of our final name which we have declared and here I will simply give it to be the value itself and after this we shall be asserting whether our value of our final email is null or not if the value of our final email is going to be null the user shall be seeing the landing page to be this initial screen else he will be automatically navigated under our home screen so here under this navigator method we have our child of a page transition to be landing page but we don't need this Instead of this, I can simply write your final email and under this final email, we can simply check if it is null or not. So here, if it is null, I can use a ternary operator and under this condition, if the value of our final email is null, so here I will simply navigate the user to landing page, else he shall be navigated to our home screen, easy as that, for my document once. Cool, so this was all about for transitioning the user to landing page or home screen accordingly. Now the next thing is remaining is about deleting the data. So for deleting the data, you can move under home screens and under the account tab. So here if I scroll down, I have nothing but my account sign out button which simply navigate us back after signing out after Google. So here instead of this, I can simply have when complete method to it. So here under this when complete method, we will simply delete the data from our secure storage. So for that, first of all, we will need the instance of our class of the secure storage. I can simply write secure storage to be a secure storage should be equal to secure storage itself. I can scroll down under my method where it is. Oh, here it is. So here I can simply write secure storage dot delete secure data. And for the key, I will simply delete the key of the email as well. You can format document once. So this was all about for deleting the secure data of the user under the key of email. So here under this authentication, we have written the data of email to the user.email and similarly name for user.display name and under our splash screen, we are simply reading the data under our init state method and the following method shall be initialized as soon as our application shall be loading up and once the application is loaded up, the secure storage shall be reading the data of the key of email and after that it will simply take the value and the value is going to be nothing but the read data itself. So under this splash screen, we are simply asserting the final value to be a string to be equal to the value which is the read value and similarly for the name and after that we are putting a condition if the final image is null we will navigate the user to landing page else he shall be default navigated to the home screen so this was the total explanation i guess all right so now let's test it up so here under my account first of all i will simply sign out from my account all right and here i will simply sign in once again with Google. Alright, we will select our account which is mine. Cool, so here we are simply navigated to our home screen. Now let's do one thing that is reload our application once. Okay, our splash screen is loading. Cool, did you see that we are now navigated to our home screen instead of navigating to our landing page. So here under my account, if I simply sign out first and reload my application once. Here you may see we are now navigated to our landing page but not to our home screen. Congratulations, we have made it up. That is we are simply securing the data of the user with the help of Flutter Secure Storage. So once again, I can sign in once with the help of Google. All right, it's me. Cool, so we are logged in into our application. And if I reload it once again, one more time. So we have made it up. Congratulations. So the next thing is about account details. 
So here we are now setting the value of final email and final name to be the following value of the read value of both the email key and similarly name key. So we can do one thing, move under our account and here we have our mock data to be my name but instead of this we will simply have the name of the user. So here I can simply add final name. I hope you have observed that the capital A was changed under a small a. So this was all about for today. That is we are now grabbing the user details of the final name and final email along with persisting user data. So guys this was all about for today. That is we have successfully manipulated the user data and persisted under our secure storage. So if you have loved this tutorial kindly like this video. Also comment down all of your doubts that may be occurred while implementing the following flutter secure storage and let me tell you one thing that you should definitely connect me on my instagram where i will be putting out all updates that i will be putting out daily videos on and many of you are connected me on instagram but but this notice is for those who are not so with that said i will see you in the next one while implementing search functionality under our udemy clone which is null for now so i will see you in the next one with another great video goodbye